This is a truly terrifying story, a story from which films have been made, a story that makes even the toughest of us shudder. This is the story of the man-eating lions of Savo. In 1896, the British began the construction of one of the biggest engineering projects in its history, a railway line stretching some 1,000 kilometers through East Africa. Its aim was to link up British East Africa with the port city of Mombasa. It employed some 37,000 workers, mostly brought from British India. Within the first year, half of the workforce had been immobilized due to malaria, dysentery, and other diseases. But more was yet to come. The lunatic line, as it became known, carved its way through the African wilderness. The project was plagued with misfortune. It was excessively expensive, workers suffered with the conditions, and there were lions, man-eating lions. Colonel Patterson was tasked with overseeing the construction of the railway bridge across the Savo River. When he arrived, he was informed of a number of lion attacks on the locals. He dismissed these stories and was convinced the missing men had been murdered for their hard-earned money. But he was in for a shock. Only days after his arrival, Colonel Patterson heard screaming in the night. He was informed by the workers that the lions had attacked once more. At first light, Patterson inspected the scene of the crime. Sure enough, by the workers' tent, there were large footprints and the trail of the man's heels headed off into the bush. Patterson followed the trail. Ever so often he found pools of blood where the lion had paused before continuing. A short distance from the camp, Patterson made a gruesome discovery. Remains of the worker were scattered on the ground. He had mostly been devoured by the beast, but his head remained. The man's eyes were open wide in terror, something Patterson would never forget. He then made a startling discovery. There were two sets of footprints around the carcass. There were two man-eating lions. Voracious and insatiable, the lions wreaked havoc for nine months. Their reign of terror was so deadly that in December 1898, the construction of the railway stopped for three weeks as workers refused to work and fled. Colonel Patterson knew he had to get rid of these lions if he was to persuade the workers to return. The lions were so uncanny with their attacks, with precision and forethought, that the workers began to believe that they were not lions at all. Instead, they believed they were evil spirits. Colonel Patterson set himself up in a tree at nightfall. He had with him a 303 and a 12-gauge shotgun. He heard the loud roaring of a pair of lions in the distance. Eerily, the roaring became louder and louder. And then, total silence. Patterson pricked his ears and strained his eyes in the deathly darkness. He could hear nothing. He could see nothing. And then it came. The truly terrifying and blood-curdling scream of a victim. The lions had struck another camp a few miles away. Another worker had been ripped from his tent in the night. The following night, Patterson set up again in a tree, this time overlooking the tent of the most recent victim. He even tied a goat to the base of the tree he sat in as bait. He waited, and he listened. Then, once more, it came. Loud roars that came nearer and nearer, and then silence as the lions stalked their next victim. Moments later, a terrified shriek of another worker being dragged off rang out across the darkness. They had attacked another camp a few miles from Patterson's hiding place. The workers' camps were spread out over eight miles of railway line. It was impossible to predict when and where the next attack would come from. It seemed the lions always avoided the camp Patterson chose to watch over. It seems that they knew to avoid it. Their behavior was unpredictable. They continued to elude capture and the attacks of the rail workers were so savage and so regular that they halted work until they took protective measures. They built tall bomas of thick, thorny bush around their camps. Each night, a watchman would periodically smash oil tins together to frighten the lions, and they kept fires burning brightly throughout the night. The lions, however, were undeterred. They became bolder and bolder. 
The workers were easy prey, and night after night, the lions feasted. They found weak spots in the boma walls and crawled through to pluck their next victim from his tent. Not fire nor noise scared these beasts. In fact, they became so bold and brazen that they often devoured their victims less than 30 yards from the tent and in full view of his comrades. The terrified workers sat listening to the crunching of their colleagues' bones only yards away. Over 50 shots were fired into the darkness. Not one of them hit either of the lions, only fueling the beliefs that these were not lions, but evil spirits, untouchable and invincible. This was suspected once more when Patterson came face to face with one of the lions. He made his way to a donkey kill with his friend's gun. He found the lions were still feasting. Holding his breath and raising his gun, Patterson waited until one of the lions walked towards him and stood within 15 yards. He pulled the trigger and to his utter horror, he heard the dull snap of a misfire. He hadn't tested his friend's weapon and it nearly cost him his life. Fortunately, the lion spooked and ran off. Patterson decided to build a makeshift platform next to the donkey carcass. They felt sure the lion would return. As darkness fell, Patterson sat on his platform 12 feet high. He suddenly heard a twig snap nearby. Straining his eyes, Patterson could just make out the cat-like shape of a large lion. It let out an angry growl, and shockingly, the hunter became the hunted. Patterson watched and listened as the lion began circling the platform, round and round, coming closer and closer. Patterson immediately regretted his decision and felt a shudder down his spine. Only 12 feet separated him from certain death. He heard a sinister growl as the lion crept stealthily towards him. Slowly and silently, he raised his gun and fired. The lion let out a mighty roar and leapt about in the undergrowth. Patterson kept firing. When he stopped, he heard some labored breathing and then nothing. The following morning, Patterson climbed down from the platform. To his amazement and satisfaction, the lion lay on the ground, dead. Cheers and celebrations rang out along the railway line. Patterson was hailed as a hero, but the job was only half done. For a couple of days, the remaining lion didn't attack anyone. He had lost his companion. Maybe he was now less bold. However, on the third day, he prowled the veranda of one of the inspectors. Frustrated that he could not get inside the bungalow, the lion instead took a goat. Patterson laid in wait the following evening sitting on a raised platform with three goats tied at the base. After a long, tiring night on watch, just before daybreak, the lion appeared and pounced on one of the goats and carried it off into the bush. Patterson fired into the darkness. At first light, he followed the trail of the lion and found it still feasting on its meal. The lion looked up, mock charged, and then fled. Patterson sat up in a tree near the abandoned goat carcass in hope the lion may return. He awoke at night to shouting. Some of the men who had been sleeping in a nearby tree were being taunted by the man-eater. It was pacing around the base of the tree. Patterson couldn't see anything, but he fired shots into the air and it fled. In the morning, they found extensive footprints surrounding the tree. Spookily, the footprints also led into each and every empty tent. The following night, Patterson got lucky. Chillingly, he could see the lion stalking him, and he took aim. He fired two shots down at the animal, watching as its body shook from the impact. However, the lion managed to escape, running off into the long undergrowth. In the morning, Patterson and his men set off to track down the injured lion. They followed splashes of blood left by the beast and then heard a threatening warning growl. The man-eater was glaring at them and came charging out of the bush. Patterson fired at the lion, which knocked him down. But incredibly, the lion came at them again and again. Each time Patterson fired his gun until he had nothing left. He and his accompanying men hurriedly climbed a nearby tree from where Patterson was able to shoot down at the animal. It limped off and fell to the ground. When Patterson walked over, the lion attacked once more, 
before Patterson shot it in the chest and the head. Finally, it was still. How to be lion safe. Number one, make noise when walking in lion territory. You do not want to startle a lion. Number two, if a lion feels threatened, it will swish its tail back and forth. If a lion is stalking you, the tail will be motionless. Number three, shout loudly and wave your arms above your head. Number four, most charges are mock charges. Stand your ground and never run. Number five, if the lion is remaining still, back away slowly. If it starts to move, then freeze immediately. Number six, if a lion does attack, try to fight back by hitting it in the face. Aim for the eyes and nose. 